Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Almost 30 Podcast. We're so glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lindsay, and this is Krista. Greetings. And, um, yeah. Yeah, we're here to <laughs> entertain you. <laughs> oh, dude, I was just telling... We're going to take you on a magical ride. I was telling Julian on our team, I was like, I'm ready to be silly willy ready with, to rip. With, our, with our community and just, you know... Just let it rip. I, thinking about our early episodes, I was like, yo... We don't want to go that far in I terms know, of honestly. <laughs> people will be like, we listen to the first episode and they're like, mm hmm. <laughs> they're like, quiet. They're like, you've like, evolved. Yeah. They're like, you, yeah. You've come leaps and bounds. Leaps and bounds. Started from the bottom, truly. Yeah. And now we're wherever we are now. Um, but we're excited to have you. I'm really excited about this episode. It means so much to me uh, to talk about, you know, body acceptance and the steps that I've taken taken to feel better in my body, to respect my body, to appreciate my body. Um, and so I did an outline for this one. I made it super actionable and I'm really excited to share it with you. Yeah. I think, um, what I love most about my thirties thus far is loving my body more. Yeah. 100%. You know, there is just something, there's a switch that happens. I don't know what it is, yeah. but, um, I, I'm so grateful mm -hmm. because I think, you know, we've both had like different experiences, but I think I spent a lot of time and energy and worry around my body, what I was eating, what I wasn't eating, what I was, you know, like just working out, just comparing and, and it's such a relief. It doesn't mean it's perfect, but it's such a relief in my thirties now to just be like, okay, I know to just ride the wave I know. and be so in tune with the body. I think that's like the second yeah. layer of it where it's yes body acceptance and then it's being so in tune with your body that if it's sending you like messages you're able to just be like okay got it need more sleep more water or i need to give you some positive affirmations and respected you. enough when it gives you the messages yeah you know because sometimes before you'd be like shut up you need more sleep mm -hmm. sleep on your dad <laughs> now's time we party <laughs> but you know and also too we had a reading with someone last week and and she said something which i've, I've heard this before in readings um from intuitives and it's like she's like you and she was going on to my lower chakras and talking about some of like the outstanding body grief that I haven't worked through and it was like she's like also you're you're kind of frustrated that you're in a body you know as like a soul or as a spiritual being she's like you're actually frustrated to like be in a physical body and I was thinking about that I'm like that's so true so true also who was mm. there's like a guru that talks about, I forget which one. And he's like, being a human is so embarrassing. You know, just thinking about all the things that humans do that it just like, <laughs> it's just wild. I was, I was, I was going number two the other day and I was actually having a very similar thought of just like, this is fucking weird yes, as shit. Like all the embarrassing, <laughs> nasty things that I'm we like, do. It's like, just like embarrassing. Oh, Like if you're a, a soul that exists above earth or on a different dimension or an alien, you're like, wow, that's so embarrassing. Totally. What they do all the time. They think about shitting and it just happens. They don't actually 100%. have to do it. But yeah. They don't even excrete. It's like, let me excrete they don't even my eat. <laughs> toxins they in my body. They eat like honey. Um, mm. Yeah. It's, it's a whole, a whole thing, but um, also too, it was really, you know, heartwarming to have so many conversations with people about this topic because I know it's so relevant for so many and us women have really gone through the ringer um, as it relates to this. So within this episode, this is in following to the body acceptance episode that I did, episode 318, 318. Um, that is my full body journey story. It's probably an hour long and it talks about um, just the whole thing. So it goes super deep. It's really honest. And I would suggest there first and then coming to this for the five ways that I really have been able to accept my body. Really powerful. And for anyone that is new to the podcast on Thursdays, you just get Krista, you just get me or us together just talking about things that are personal to us that we're working through that we'd like to share. So and on Tuesdays, we have our longer form guest interviews. Uh, speaking of former guests, before we get into this episode, our friend Catherine Schwarzenegger Pratt has a new pod. I know. A new baby and a new pod. New baby, new a pod new, coming. New baby, new pod, new husband, new life. A new life. <laughs> it's called The Gift of Forgiveness. And um, our conversation with her on our podcast was, was really powerful around what it takes to truly forgive and move on and why forgiving is 
uh, such a powerful mode of healing. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really, really excited to tune into this show. She's been on her own journey of forgiveness, talking to friends, family, therapists, priests, strangers. Um, and she wrote her newest book, the New York times bestselling book, the gift of forgiveness. So this podcast is, uh, in that same vein, she has some incredible guests like Sean Hayes, Chelsea Handler, Camilla. Oh, I'm going to say it wrong. Coelho. Coelho. Yeah, thank you. Cheryl Burke, as well as updates on some of the stories featured in her book. So this is a podcast coming from Headspace Studios, and you can download The Gift of Forgiveness with Catherine Schwarzenegger Pratt, inspiring stories from those who've forgiven the unforgivable. Yeah, we had that episode interview with her, which was great. She's a doll. A doll. Sweet doll. Love her so much. Love her so much. So, so excited for her. Huge congratulations. And, you know, just orders of business before we get started. Uh, we have our alien workshop. We have our alien Can't workshop wait. with Brie Melanson talking about her abductions. We're, we're going there. Talking about her abductions. Talking about uh, the aliens that she channels. And this will be all about other dimensional interplanetary beings. And I think it's really relevant because disclosure is near. So this one's going to be awesome. Brie is a spiritual medium, a channeler. She is a leader and healer. We've worked with her before. She's super profound. Uh, So that is part of our new paradigm digital workshop series. We've done um, everything from human design to energy healing to anxiety to uh, new paradigm earth. Tons of different topics and workshops through the past couple months that all now live on our shop site. But this is our upcoming one that you could join live with Brie Melanson. Yeah. Super powerful. I actually just got the Galaxy View night vision microscope she recommended to do a little desert no way. UFO much? sighting. Like two hundred on okay. Amazon. I was like, this is gonna be this is gonna be quarantine fun. I took a picture <laughs> of the moon in on a like I went to an Airbnb experience and they we took pictures of the moon from a telescope. But it just looked oh. kind of stupid because it was Boring. like you could just Google it. Oh. It was just like, okay, like, sure, you did this. <laughs> It's hard to describe. It was like kind of, you were like, oh, this is dope. It's on my iPhone. But it was like, okay, I don't know. I'm just going to Photoshop it and yeah, just, tell people. Yeah, just tell people. It's, <laughs> you don't even need to go through the whole process. Um, and we also have, in addition to that, we have our merch. Yeah, merch is coming out July 20th. Our collaboration with Daisy LA. Made in LA, sustainable, eco-friendly, organic. Um, and these designs are so cool. And yes. really like... Yes, we appreciate you repping almost 30, but this is really about repping like your own independence and empowerment and evolution. So excited to see you in almost 30 threads. You can uh, find the merch July 20th, shopalmost30.com. Yes, we love you so much. Um, As always, really appreciate your ratings and reviews. It means the world to us if you just take a second and just give us a holler on the on iTunes um, and you can follow us on Instagram we have tons of great content that we're producing there and then on YouTube we got the videos going so come got see your videos. girls being consistent being come consistent. check out our faces I know. <laughs> it's a surprise <laughs> thanks as always and we'll see you on the other side enjoy enjoy and also just a quick note we will be talking about body body image weight everything like that. So if you feel like you are going to get triggered by this conversation, we've got other ones for you on the show. Make sure to listen to those. And if this has been helpful for you and you feel like it has made an impact on your life, please share this with a woman in your life that needs to hear the message. Hello guys, it's Krista and I am so excited for our episode today for us to hang out, have a little girl time, just chat. Uh, This episode is inspired by the previous episode that I did on body acceptance. Uh, That is episode 318, so 318. It's called the body acceptance episode. And that episode is probably the episode that I, (laughs) I'm going to say episode again so you guys can understand. Episode, episode. (laughs) But I received the most DMs, um, questions, feedback, comments about that specific episode episode that I did over anything I've ever done on the show. And that tells me so much about um, the struggle that we still have as women with accepting our bodies and how challenging it can be and how we are still in process of healing such deep 
trauma and programming that we've grown up with and how much unlearning there is to do. And, um, you know, there's part of me that feels so, so sad when I read the messages of girls that, <clears throat> that have really struggled with their body for their whole lives because I deeply know that. And I, um, spent most of my life there and I never thought I'd be better. Um, but then it also gives me hope that now we're at a moment in time where we feel and know that we can safely share about our journey and we can safely speak to the problem because that honesty piece, which is going to be one of my tips, is one of the most important parts of the entire journey. So when we're able to speak to the issue explicitly, especially to someone maybe that you don't know, like me, uh, in your DMs, it's it's super important and you know it's no short feat in part of your healing journey. So I would recommend, you know, before starting this is listening to the full story of my body acceptance episode. It's really just really, really honest on um, about my journey. Talks about how I grew up, what that was like, um, the dangerous ways that I treated my body, you know, all the ways in which I would um, punish myself, I would restrict, I would binge. I basically called it my... Um, Dark Passenger, <laughs> like the show Dexter. I don't know if you guys remember watching that. I was obsessed in college. I would have nightmares every night. Uh, but in it, the main character, character Dexter, calls his secret his Dark Passenger. And for so long for me, it felt like the Dark Passenger was the constant loop conversation about how much I was eating, how many calories it had, when I was working out, how much I was working out, um, what I was wearing, if I looked good in it, if I felt good in it, and just around my body and not being enough and not being small enough even when I was at my smallest and not feeling good in my home. So in that episode, it's really just like the deep uh, story that I wanted to just really honestly share with you guys um, so you know that you're not alone. You know, it was really challenging for me, but it was also really healing. And, you know, I will say that it was really beautiful, you know, and powerful that after I shared my episode, um, I talk a little bit about my childhood and, and just some of the things that contributed to uh, the eating and body issues that I had. Not going into full detail because, you know, it's really my story to tell and no one else's, but I did have a conversation with my, my mom that was really, really healing. And we talked about you know, just being a kid and her never realizing that all the things that she was doing, you know, to shame herself, to make herself feel small, to make herself act small, to eat less, to be less, to really just, you know, completely have food and diet run her life. She didn't realize that that was affecting me so much as a kid, you know, so she really didn't have the understanding that I was watching everything that she was doing. And, you know, she said something really powerful in our conversation that was really healing for me. She said, you know, I've always seen food as a threat. She said, I've always seen food as a threat. And I actually said that phrase of seeing food as a threat to my lovely therapist, Christina Weiss in uh, Southern California. And we thought, you know, I just, I mean, the feeling when someone nails the word for whatever the situation or circumstance is, honestly, is one of my favorite feelings on earth. I know this is a tragic situation, but to, to identify food as a threat is so profound and it really just struck me how so often we do see food as a threat if we're at you know we're at an event and we see a plate of desserts that is a threat <laughs> that feels like a threat when you have you know eating or body issues or if you're going on vacation and you're not going to be able to work out it feels like a threat or if you um have a situation or circumstance where you can't control your environment to control your eating, diet, nutrition, workout, that also feels like a threat. So in so many of these situations, things can feel like threats to your existence or to, to your normal state of the control that you want to have. But through the through the body acceptance episode, I've, I just wanted to thank you guys for the healing conversations that I've had with you. And then 
I just wanted to also say that, you know, it's provided me a really healing conversation with my mom, which was really, really beautiful because so many of us, you know, are struggling with issues as it relates to our body and, and how we feel in it. Um, so in this episode, I'm going to go over just um, really succinctly the five things that I think are really going to be helpful for anyone that is looking to further accept their body or to first accept their body. Um, because I have found that there are strategies that I employ now um, that are super helpful for me and have been really, really helpful for me over you know the past couple years since it's really been a priority and since I felt like I feel good in my body and I feel at home in my body. And I, you know, will say that I never thought that would be possible. <laughs> it's funny, like as humans, you know, it's like once you get one thing down, you like find the other thing that you're like focus on, which that, that's terrible. So I have my other shadow work that I'm doing right now for sure. My lovely human brain always finds something that I need to do and be better in I need to I need to be better at or be better for but I am so excited to say that you know the conversation around my body is very minimal compared to the way it was and I can exist in the world and I can interact with the world without that loop conversation about diet exercise nutrition that used to always be happening um so it is possible. And I, I hope you know that. And um, just know too, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a doctor. I am not a nutritionist. I am not a board certified plastic surgeon. I am not a dentist. I am just your friendly neighborhood podcast host and your best internet friend. So None of these are coming from a clinical perspective. I definitely recommend for anyone that feels like they're struggling in this space to seek help, whether that's through therapy or whether that's through coaching or whether that's through um, anything that really is going to help you to um, to just feel and be better. A professional is always a good spot. Podcasts are good. Podcasts are good. Let me let me tell you, they're really good. They're good to wet your whistle, but if you got to get deep, we we really want you to seek a professional. So, just know that. I know you guys were. I know you guys were looking at me, and you're like, "Wow, she's probably a medical doctor with tons of years of experience," but alas, I am not. So let's get into it for the body acceptance episode. Um, the five things that I've done that have been really impactful for me that I'm excited to share with you because I believe that, you know, applying one, two, three, four, five of them will be really helpful for you as well. And when we're talking about body acceptance, I just want to lay the foundation that, you know, body acceptance is really the acceptance, the appreciation, and the respect of your body. And with my episode, I, I specifically chose to say body acceptance over body positivity because I don't ever want to be attached to any movement that I feel like is a movement that exists outside of my own identity. And although I am, I think it's an amazing movement and I think the women in it and the men in it uh, that are, you know, and they in it are so incredible. I didn't really want to be in that sort of conversation because for me, it's really been about true acceptance of my body um, that has felt the best. So body acceptance, again, is the acceptance, the appreciation, the respect of your body. And for me, that feels better over anything, over any sort of um, conversation outside of the inner dialogue that I have that needs to be had that could be warped within the body positivity community. I hope that's clear. I also, too, just as a thing, I didn't want to be, I just want to be me. You know, I think that's, you guys always just, you know, we're always trying to be more of ourselves. And I don't ever want to have labels on me that prevent me from being anything but that label. So that's my, that's my rant on that. But let's get into this. So the first thing for body acceptance that I believe is really important and um, one of my favorites of the tips is being radically honest with yourself. Being radically honest with yourself. And for me, this was one of these things was related to um, my clothes, you know, my clothing sizes. And I did this when I did the life edit, which was another solo episode that I did, which talks about the ways in which I edited my life 
over, you know, a few months to really just allow more space and abundance. But within that was being really honest about my clothes and the sizes that my clothes were, the sizes that lived in my closet and the sizes that I actually, or the size that I actually was. So for so long, um, I was a certain size and, you know, when I moved to Los Angeles, I was my smallest weight I'd ever been. And I grew to, (laughs) it sounds weird to say grew. It's like, I'm like a young hippo or like a chia pet, but I, I grew, I guess I, I expanded. Um, I evolved to be the biggest size that I've ever been which is totally fine. But um, so within that, you know, if I have in my closet all of these clothes that are a certain size that represent me from four years ago, that represent me from college, that represent me from a time that I'm not living in, then being really honest with myself, like, am I ever going to wear these? Am I ever going to fit in these again? Are these ever going to be clothes that I actually wear? And instead of having that stress of the the residue that you have internally when you walk to your closet and you see that dress, that BCPG, beautiful dress that you wore to the bar in college that you loved, that you know is four sizes too small, two sizes too small, however many sizes too small. You may look at that and think, oh, that's a beautiful dress. I love how tight it is and I love the sequence. I would love to wear it with pumps. Oh man, those ridiculous dresses we wore. But you'd look at the dress and then, you know, for a second, if you have body um, image issues, you might think, oh, wow, that's a, I could never wear that dress. That would never fit me. I know it's too small. I would look fat in that dress, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So by being really honest with myself through the life edit, I was able to remove and donate all the clothes in my closet that were not the size that I was. And this not only made space in my closet, but it made space in my brain and really just allowed me to only have clothes at my clothes. It's not at an option. It's like it would only allow me to have clothes as options that were going to be clothing that fit and flattered me. And so that's the other part of this. So the fit is really important. It's just being honest. And it's really like also remembering numbers are freaking crazy on clothes. I have... I have a range of four sizes on a on a good day with all my clothes. There's vanity sizing involved. There's different brands do different sizing. So it's like almost laughing at the size and numbers because it's almost so ridiculous that sometimes I'm an XL, sometimes I'm a small. It's like they don't ever really make sense. So it's really just finding what's best for you, knowing that brands do vanity sizing and brands do strategic sizing for certain sales related reasons. So by getting rid of all the clothes or donating all the clothes that do not fit and haven't fit for a few years, you're going to make space in your closet and in your, in your brain where you're not going to be comparing yourself to sizes that were, you know, may not fit you anymore. And in addition to that, it is adding in things in your closet to make you feel better in your body. So things that fit you, maybe it's your size, maybe it's a size up. So it feels a little loose. It feels good. Or that also flatter you. So figuring out what your body type is and what your body shape is and what clothes are going to accentuate the best parts of that body. So for me, it's like I didn't really know how to dress my body probably ever because it's like you grow up and you're like, okay, I'm, I have this body and then you get older and you're like, okay, now I have like boobs. And then I'm like, okay, now I'm like – What's going on here? So really figuring out, maybe by looking at celebrities that have a similar body type to you, say it's pear-shaped, who has a beautiful pear shape that you can look at, how are their stylists styling them to make them feel good in their body? For me, it's more of hourglass shape, maybe just, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Probably hourglass, but whatever my shape is, it's like, who is someone that I feel like has a body that may be similar to me that I can look for the ways in which that they're dressing themselves to look flattering? Or there's tons of websites that have um, information on finding clothes that fit your figure. But by dressing for your size and by dressing for your shape and body, you will feel so much better in your body. And you'll really give yourself the opportunity to, um, to just feel good. And, you know, I know I'm starting this out with a very like surface level part of this 
full conversation, but I think it's important to start there and then move deeper because the deeper things take a little bit longer and something like this could take a weekend to donate and get rid of clothes and then, you know, maybe a week to to spend a little bit of money um, or rent clothes or go to a vintage shop to find clothes that really fit you. And this really sets you up to feel really good in your body to do more things because, you know, momentum is key here when you are working with body acceptance. Um, and I think I'm going to say something. I'm going to start out with something a little controversial. And again, this is truly my perspective and my opinion. So if you hear this and you're like, oh, hell no then that's a hell no, girl. This is a hell no for you. Do not follow this. But for me, the scale. I weigh myself maybe once a week, um, a few times a month. And what I, come to, what I came to realize about the scale and weighing myself on the scale was that in my avoidance, it's not like my number changed by me avoiding it. So say I... To say I weighed 200 pounds. So if I didn't weigh myself, my not knowing of the 200 pounds wouldn't change how much I weighed. It's me avoiding the actual number. And to me, that felt like unacceptance. So by me weighing myself on the scale and at times seeing a number that I never thought I would be at, I had to force myself to do the work to accept myself as I was on that scale, looking at that number. And previously when I went through a period of like never weighing myself, I think I went a year, totally fine, respect, respect it for what it is. I don't think I saw as much of my acceptance come through as when I actually started to weigh myself and and went there. It was like I went there. I went there by seeing, having the moment of, oh my God, that number is higher than a number that I've I would feel comfortable with and then going through the process of like, but I'm still okay. I'm still healthy. I'm still here. I still appreciate my body. I still accept my body no matter what that number says. So at times I think for some people, you know, the scale can be super triggering. It can kind of throw you into a spiral. But for me, it was really being radically honest about no matter what this number says, And I'm getting to continue to come back to it to remind myself that no matter what this number says, I will continue to love myself and I will continue to accept and appreciate myself no matter what it says. So the number is really just like the number is arbitrary, you know, doesn't even really mean anything. You provide the meaning for the number. So I would provide the meaning for the number, whatever it is. So I had to really change my perspective on whatever that number was to really see any healing in my life. So for radical honesty, it's the clothes, getting the right um, sizing, getting things that flatter you. And then, you know, within the work, it could be around a scale. It could be around you bringing in a scale to just really be like, oh, my God, I'm this number and I'm still healthy and I still feel good. And I still have an amazing life that I feel fulfilled in. And knowing that the number has no power unless you give it power. Um. For two, so for number two of the what I do for body acceptance, um, I think it's really important. And what really helped me was shifting my focus and looking at myself as a whole person rather than looking at just myself as like a physical being. I think as we evolve and, and grow and as we become more conscious as we get older, you know, I can remember in... I was talking to my best friend the other day. I can remember in college just being going to bars and like looking around at girls and being like, oh my God, I'm like not, I don't look like her. Like, why is he looking at her? Whatever. It would be like exhausting. You're just so insecure. It can be painful at points. And um, so much of, of my growth has been discovering myself as a spiritual being, as a human that you know, has energy that cannot be seen but can be felt that doesn't exist in my body as someone that can be valued for more than just a body but a brain and a heart and a voice and remembering so much that we are whole beings. And, you know, when someone walks in a room, we see them with our eyes but we also feel them with our energy. And there have been so many studies to show and prove that people's energetics or the aura that people have or the energy that people have 
can really be the thing that is read by others first before the actual senses of the eyes. So by focusing on myself as a whole being, I was able to really lean into the parts of me that I wanted to, to, to develop, whether that was in my spiritual practice or whether that was in my voice or whether that was in um, even my, you know, reading and understanding of the world at, as it exists through metaphysics or whatever it is that I'm interested in. And also, too, through this, you know, you really are able to lean into things you love and then hopefully realize your purpose. Because I can tell you that although it may not seem possible by looking at the media, but it is true that your purpose is greater than just being your dream clothing size. Your purpose is greater than being your dream clothing size or whatever that size you want to be, the 10 pounds lighter, 10 pounds heavier, whatever it is, the size you want to be. You're not here to spend your life thinking about how long it takes you to work out the bagel crisps you had yesterday. It is so much more than that on this earth and it is such a disservice that we have been served by the media, by the dark forces at work to let, lead us to believe that we are just this physical being in this physical vehicle. You are a soul that chose this body to incarnate in and to experience what you have to experience. And really it is so powerful when you really start to know yourself and when you really start to know your soul because that's when life gets really fun. And that's when you see all the magic happening that lives outside of just that thinking and planning around your body. So cultivating your sense of self, your purpose, um, and shifting your focus away from just the physical through leaning into other parts that exist or other aspects of you is really, really, really key. It's really, really key. As a small, you know, task for something like this, where your focus is, you know, your energy goes. So um, I'm not really going to talk that much about social media stuff, but as a good practice, you know, you could think about who you're following on social media and really having a think like, is my, if my focus is on 15 amazing fitness influencers and that focus becomes I am not this, I am not that, rather than inspiration from, you know, it probably would be a good idea to either unfollow um, or maybe bring more people into the mix that you can look at holistically that um, are being portrayed on social media for things outside of their physical. Because of course, our fitness friends, our fitness girls on Instagram are way more than workouts. They are way more than whatever it is that they're showing on their page or their brand page. Because Instagram is not everything. We all know this. So all my, all my homies are, are my fitness girls. But incorporating other people into the mix that maybe are illustrators or satisfy your, ins your nature, the fact that you love nature or that you love cooking. And really, again, looking at every single part of your life as like ways in which you can make things more whole and more holistic that draw your attention to things rather than physical. Such a good one, huh? Th this one, I mean, the shifting focus is major. It takes work and just know that too, you know, for, for any of these um, but I think especially for this one and the next one, maybe the fifth one, these take work and they take constant practice. And I know that's like so annoying to hear. It's like, oh my gosh, I have to do this forever. But it does. It's like, you know, when you have the thought or you have the feeling where you aren't looking yourself, looking at yourself as a whole, it's taking that moment, taking that step back to be like, oh my gosh. I've only thought about how I need to lose five pounds, you know, for the first 30 minutes when I woke up this whole morning. I've been strategizing of how I'm going to do that. Let's just take a second and let's shift our focus. How can I show up better for the people I love today? How can I be a better person today? How can I make my future self proud today? And just taking those small moments to shift your focus are major, major. Wow. <laughs> okay. No more singing. Mindfulness. Mindfulness, mindfulness, kind of not as tangible feeling sometimes, 
I completely understand and I am with you. But mindfulness, I it, it would be remiss for me to leave out mindfulness because um, meditation and mindfulness has been the most profound transformation for me on all aspects and areas of my life and my relationships and my relationship with my body and my career, everything. And mindfulness is um, the meditation piece, of course, and it's also how you speak to yourself. So if you were to tap in and wire into my brain, which I'm sure the government has already done somehow, um, you would be hearing myself at quiet moments, at moments where there is pause, at moments where I have a second when I'm sitting in my car or I'm at a traffic light or I'm reading in bed with Justin or I'm cooking dinner, you would hear me saying things to myself like, I am joy, I'm abundance, I'm love, I feel good in my body, I love who I am, I love my life. And, you know, these mantras and these affirmations don't happen naturally at first. It's really the rewiring of your brain and the internal dialogue and conversation that happens. And on Almost 30, on the website we have, um, I think we have 150 affirmations that um, I've used that our team uses regularly to get in the habit of leveraging affirmations all the time. So really in the mindfulness, it's how you speak to yourself that is so important to changing your relationship with yourself. For me, it really comes first of meditation, which hel- which helps me to see myself outside of myself. And I know that's kind of a weird phrasing and terminology, but when you are able to witness yourself in the world and to watch yourself or to observe yourself outside of yourself from a non-judgmental perspective, that's when you can really make changes and shifts. So when I started meditating, I was finally able to see like, oh my gosh, I think about this all the time. I think about food all the time. I am working out. I'm thinking about working out all the time. I'm thinking about how I'm uncomfortable in my clothes. You know, I was able to notice the thinking. I was able to notice the feeling. I was able to notice when I was comparing myself. I was able to notice when I was just feeling consumed by my thoughts. And then from there, I was able to make the shifts. So without noticing and observing it really can take on a life of its own. So the mindfulness through meditation, and I do just 10, 15 minutes of my own style of meditation, uh, just watching my breathing, or there's also Joe Dispenza meditations on YouTube that I really love. You can watch them for free, or you can get them from Joe Joe Dispenza's website. We also have meditations on our website too, if you want to get those. I think those are free. Um, So the meditation happens first before mindfulness. From my perspective, it may happen differently for others. And then it helps me to create a new narrative and new conversation with like, how do I want to talk to myself? What do I want to say? If I knew for 100% fact that I was creating my reality right now with the universe and that the universe was listening to me, everything I was saying and was responding, what would I want to say to myself? Would I want to say, I look fat in this outfit. If the universe is listening and responding to me, that is not what I would want to say. So being mindful of how you speak to yourself is very important in your co-creation with the universe and the way that you exist. I think some of my, um, two of my favorite mantras that I also use uh, regularly are, I love my body and my body loves me. I love my body and my body loves me. And another one that I'll use when I'm eating at meals is I love food and food loves me. I love food and food loves me, which is freaking true, freaking true. But as, you know, coming, pulling up, if we were to get a little woo woo, thinking about the energetics whenever we're having a meal and the energy that we put into our food when we're eating and the energy that our body is at when we're receiving that food can help us to digest better, to feel better when when we're eating and so many things. So I really love to incorporate those mantras whenever I'm eating or whenever I'm just having a moment of quiet with myself and my body to remind myself of those things. Okay, that was mindfulness. So four. Four is having a personalized approach. So before, and you guys can hear this in the body acceptance episode, I was doing an approach to fitness and nutrition that was like, 
the approach that everyone was talking about. It was like, work out the HIIT classes, go go to the spin class three times a week, work out five to six times a week, make sure you get your steps in, make sure you're taking this supplement, make sure you're you know eating chicken and broccoli for dinner and you're having oatmeal for breakfast and your lunch is a salad and then you could have a protein shake as a treat. It was like the standard whatever everyone was saying and this was like trend based. So it was like high school, special K diet, college, whatever the fuck. And just doing what everyone else was doing. And I wasn't ever taking like a personalized approach or personal responsibility to really figure out what worked for me and my body and my lifestyle. So now I really take everything with a grain of salt when people are talking about what works for them because it might not work for me. It might not work for my lifestyle, my genes, whatever. So now I'm really personalized with my workouts. I actually really walk mostly now I walk and run I'll walk every day and then I'll run a few times a week and then I'll do like <laughs> like 10 push-ups and like three crunches a few times a week honestly it's it's hilarious my mat workouts are comical because it's just a mess but I really have noticed that I feel better in my body when I'm doing less and when I'm just moving intuitively so being personalized to me that this works for me at another point in time in my life I did yoga every single day that was great for me then I did hit workouts for a while that worked a lot for a while. It was great. So I've tried everything. And at points in time in my life, they worked really well. But being now even more personalized to myself, I know that this works now for my body. It also, the personalization and the personalized approach also works with my supplements. So now I have personalized supplements um, with Paragon. I think you guys know one of our sponsors. I've done the personalized nutrition plan and supplement plan with them, which has been incredibly helpful. And then also too with um, my schedule. So I used to be like, okay, I'm going to intermittent fast. I'm going to eat from like 10 to four or whatever. And I would follow these like guidelines that were mostly done on studies for, you know, mostly have results that have been proven because they were in studies done on just men and not women. So a lot of times, you know, in the health space, they do these studies for people that provide data, but the studies are only done on men and not done on women. And Elisa Vitti of Flow Living, who's been on the podcast before, talks a lot about this. So remembering too that a lot of data and information that we're receiving is about men's health and not specifically women's health because the data is not there. So with my food schedules, I just try and eat more intuitively. I love breakfast. Breakfast is my jam. I think it's because it's the most carb heavy meal that you can make. And maybe, maybe that's not true. But for me, it is because I'm like, oh, I want birch benders waffles. I want daily harvest flatbreads. I want smoothies. I want all the things. So I love breakfast. So I always make sure to allow myself to have breakfast. And then sometimes I'll just finish my dinners late earlier. I'll have dinner at like 530. And this works for me rather than being like, oh, what's everyone doing with like their schedules and just following my personal approach to what works for me for workouts, food, et cetera, foods and supplements. And then also too on this, um, this is kind of controversial too, I think, I'm not sure, but it really has worked for me. And so take it or leave it, you know, take it or leave it. This is for us to both discover together. But I removed the foods from my house that would previously cause me to binge. And I know that, and I want to be mindful that some people are like going to pick apart that languaging that I just used and be like, okay, well, if you're removing it from your thing, then you're not actually healing yourself. And then, you know, but you're not gonna, you know, if you're gonna binge, you're gonna find another opportunity. It's like, yeah, okay, I get it. But I will say that by not having, you know, a box of protein bars in my, in my I, so my binge foods are granola, peanut butter, protein bars, cookies, healthy treats and desserts are like my jam, among other things. But by not having these at my house, I believe that I provided myself a better opportunity to do better by myself by not putting the temptation in front of me. And now I've been able to heal myself over the past couple of months without these things in front of me to distract me or lead me off my path. And now I can have them in my house much more easily and I don't feel like I'm going to binge. Because I used to do days, I mean, people would be like, oh my God, I'm crazy. I ate like 
two protein bars today. I'm like, I have had 12 in a day. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, okay, come talk to me when you have fucking 12. And then they'll be like, oh my God, I had like three scoops of peanut butter. I'm like, I just polished off the jar. I'm on the next one. <laughs> so I'm laughing because it's it's crazy that I would just be in that phase, but that's what's binging. That's what that's what binging is like. And it's heartbreaking, but it's also kind of wild. So for me personally, it worked for me to remove any foods that would be triggering for me to binge or overeat because that overeating and binging when I would be having those super palatable foods would put me back in a shame cycle that, you know, oftentimes now I can really help get myself out of through positive self-talk and just kind of moving on with my life. But when you're in phases where you're more delicate than others, having those around sometimes just doesn't set you, set yourself up for success. So if it works for you to have them around and you're like crushing it and you don't feel tempted by them and you know, whatever. But for me, it really helped me and it just made me feel like I was really respecting myself and the fact of like, oh, I know myself enough to know that these are tempting for me and that it's actually really hard for me to resist these. And I totally get that. And what I'm going to do to help myself is to not buy these or keep these at the house. And just being really honest with that rather than before, I'd be like, oh, I can buy them. But like, no, Krista, only eat one. And then it would be like I'd eat 14 and it would be like, oh, God, why did I do that? So it was really being honest about the knowing that these are a trigger fruit for me. And at this point in time in my journey, I'm going to, you know, chill out on having them at home. If I'm out, I'll have them. If I'm out of friends, I'll have them. But you know, at my house, let's just keep it a little, let's keep it kind of cool. So that is number four, a personalized approach. Okay. So the last one, number five on the list of body acceptance tips and tricks um, is really, hmm, hmm, let me, let me have a think about how I want to propose this one. Hmm. I think this one is the most academic, um, the most maddening at times, and also the most fun. And this is really the unlearning. So the unlearning of the messages and the narratives that you have been taught in your life and really identifying how those show up for you today. So as an example, um, a message or a narrative that... I was taught was that, and it's hard for me to say this, and so um, um, just because it, it's hard for me to say this because I don't want anyone to judge some, I don't want anyone to judge, but I'm just going to say it. So a message or narrative that I received was that if you are not thin, then you will not be liked by the opposite sex, in my case, being Um, a cis woman. So if you're not thin, you will not be liked by the opposite sex. So that is some part of my unlearning was like taking a day, taking a weekend to get in my journal and be like, this is a, this is something that is in in my subconscious that I see that I want to figure out where this came from. And in my case, it was someone very close to me basically saying those words, you know, a few times in my life. And so tracing that back to those situations and those circumstances and being like, okay, I believe this there we go, radical honesty. And I see where this comes from. And now I can really identify the ways in which that is not true, the ways in which that has impacted me in my life, and the ways in which that I can go about reprogramming and unlearning those beliefs. And there are so many, honey. I mean, there are tons. It's like, I mean, we could go on forever. But really having a think by even leveraging the negative self-talk that you have and writing that down. So it could be like an unlearning of if I eat breakfast before 10 a.m., I'm going to get fat because I'm not intermittent fasting. Or if I don't work out five times a week, I will be flabby. It, or if I don't have boobs and a butt, then I'm not going to be attractive. Or if I'm not completely whatever, then no one will like me. I will not receive love. I will not be accepted. I will not be seen. I will not be successful, whatever it is. So getting very clear through journaling or therapy or conversations with yourself, meditations, reflections, or with friends about all the unlearning that you need to do and the messages that you've received, the narratives that you've received from family, friends, media, advertising, Instagram, 
whatever, and then starting there. And again, this can be super maddening. It can be fun because you're like, oh, fuck, that's where I got that. That's why I feel that way. That's why I feel like I need to be small to be loved or that's why I feel like I need to be whatever to be loved. I see it now. And that feeling and thought exists outside of me. That not it. That is not me. Again, that that unlearning process is really identifying that as outside of you, not you. And in the unlearning, it's really important for us to be really critical of social media. It's really important for us to be really critical of advertisements, of television, of any sort of media that we consume because it has really done quite a number on us and our beliefs and our understanding of um, what women should look like and what women should be like, that we should always be small, that we should shrink, that we should speak softly, we should walk softly, we should you know, be as small as we can. And Glennon Doyle talks about this on our, our podcast that we did with her um, about Untamed. But it's really important that whenever we see you know, an Instagram photo or an advertisement of a, um, of anything that we're really just being really critical and critical sounds, you know, I think nowadays it's like someone, someone would hear the word critical and think harsh or think judgmental, but I just want to, uh, offer it in the way of being like, this might not be for my highest and greatest good. And I am going to observe this advertisement ad photo, image, whatever, with the understanding that, you know, this might not be true. This messaging might not be overt. And this messaging could be potentially damaging for me because it could be um, further solidifying uh, any ideas that I have about my body or who I am that are not helpful. So being really critical of what you're consuming is really important, you know, and that doesn't mean that, um, everything is like trigger warning or everything should be um, making you feel less than. But when we're looking at media conglomerates and large advertising, we do need to be really, really mindful of what we're seeing and hearing. And I think it's getting better, which has been great. Um, I do believe that I've seen a lot more body types and people and all that. So I do think that they're kind of catching on just because people are so fed up at this point, which is awesome. But we still just want to be thoughtful about the ways in which we're consuming media. And then working on unlearning those messages and narratives that, you know, we've been taught through our whole lives, which is, you know, heartbreaking for our little, our little selves to just be, um, you know, absorbing that kind of information. Should we take a breath? (sighs) Maybe one more. (sighs) Okay. So we've got radical honesty, shifting focus, mindfulness, taking a personalized approach, and unlearning. My favorite ways for body acceptance. I love you. I will see you on the next one. Make sure to listen to 318, the first episode, and DM me. I'm here to talk. It's Krista on Instagram, and I will see you on the next episode.